shout, celebrate your healer, your defender, your redeemer, your healer, your defender, your redeemer. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. You will continue to praise his name in the name of Jesus. You will continue to praise his name. You will continue to praise his name. The reason for praise will not cease on your lips in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to someone that the cause to praise him, the reason to praise him will not cease on your lips. Forever, from everlasting to everlasting, you will continue to praise him in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be for you and your entire household in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, put your hands together. Clap for Jesus. Celebrate him. What a mighty God. What an awesome God. We serve. Hallelujah. You are welcome to church. Amen. Those of us watching online, you are welcome to church. Hallelujah. And those of us uh, in Macedonia, you are welcome to church. Hallelujah. In the comfort of your home, you are welcome to church. Hallelujah. It's good to see you. And I pray that the blessing of the Lord will be with you in the name of Jesus. Shall we bow our heads and let us just pray for a minute. Lord, we give you praise. We thank you. We magnify your name. Thank you for your great and a good God. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for your many blessings which we cannot count. We can count them. If we count them, we can number them all. Lord, what we give you praise, we magnify your name. Lord, we come this day, the Bible says that day unto day utter a speech. That you word that you have for us today, the speech that you have for us today, will not miss it in the name of Jesus. I will receive my, you will receive yours in the name of Jesus. Speech unto glory, O oh God, speech of healing, speech of deliverance will be uttered unto our lives in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word, Spirit of God, we ask that you will interpret these words to our heart. You will speak to us expressly in the mighty name of Jesus. And your name alone will be glorified and blessings will be ours. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Welcome as we continue our series on the family. Amen. Somebody say family. Oh, I can't hear you, church. I thought you'd be excited about family. Ah, my family. Very important. And I know your family is very important. Family is important in the heart of everyone, even the young and even to the old. And I pray that God will keep your family. God will keep your family. God will make your family healthy in the name of Jesus. We've been looking at the design for a healthy family. We started about three or four Sundays ago, and we are still marching on hallelujah. We're spending some time to really break it down, what it means to have a healthy family, hallelujah. Unfortunately, some of the things that we are bringing to us are those things that they bring to people when there is already destruction and hazard in the family, hallelujah. But for us, before those things, so that those things will not happen, we need to have a better understanding so that we can guide ourselves, we can guide our family, and that family can be what the family that God has in his mind. Amen? Now, God has always worked with family and has always dealt with family from the pages of uh, Genesis chapter 1 all the way through the way to the Revelation. We saw, we talk about Adam's family. But we also saw Noah's family, hallelujah, in the book of uh, Genesis, I believe chapter 6. If we look at Genesis chapter 6, I'm not going to ask us to read it because of our time. We saw there that the heart was in great turmoil. The heart, the heart was wicked and God was upset that he created the heart and the people. And he was about to destroy the heart and destroy all flesh. And what, but God saw one person, one man, Noah, who was a good man, hallelujah. Noah was a good man, and God saw that, and God was about to save Noah, but when God saved Noah, when God called him, he said to him, he said, I want you and your sons and your son's wife to go into the ark of salvation. When God was about to save Noah, he didn't just save him by himself, because he knew, even though he might save Noah, 
But do you think Noah will be okay without his family? Noah will never be okay without his family. He will never be okay without his family. His family, his children, and other people may be part of those people that God was really upset with. But God knew that in order to save Noah and to give Noah the peace and the joy that he needed in the heart, he needed to save him and his family. So God has always worked with the family and God has the intent, the intention to keep family together. He has it in his plan. So when he called Noah, he said, Noah, you and your children, you and your sons, you and your son's wife, I want you to get into the ark. We also saw in the life of Abraham, when God called Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1, you saw there God called him. He says, leave your family, leave your kinsmen, leave this entire city and all the extended family and everybody. And I want you to go to a land, a promised land, a land of Canaan, a land filled with milk and honey, a land where you're going to be blessed, a land where you're going to enjoy, a land where you will have more than enough. It says God called him, but when he was living, hallelujah, the Bible recorded that he, every soul that was with him, Every soul that belonged with him went with him to the land of Canaan. Amen. So if God is going to bless a man, he's going to bless the entire family. Hallelujah. If God is going to bless a woman, he's going to bless the entire family. If the children are blessed, it is blessings of the entire family. Hallelujah. My blessing is the blessings of my family. Your blessing is the blessing of your family. That is the design and that's the intent of God. And we see how God has worked with families and generations in the pages of book. We also saw families that are not in the, in, in the plan and the purpose of God. If you go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 2, we read about the family of Eli. Amen. From verse 12 to 17, the family of Eli, we saw here, Eli was a judge, a big man in the city. It was the second to the last judge of, in Israel. It was a judge. It was not only a judge, but it was also a priest. Hallelujah. It was a judge. It was a priest. It was a very influential man. Hallelujah. When you say influential, he has everything that he needed in the city, in the society. He's a well-known man. But the Bible also recorded that he had two sons, Ophine and Phineas. And these two sons, they serve as priests in the temple at Shiloh. But the Bible describes these two sons as worthless men. Our children will not be worthless in the name of Jesus. The Bible, another translation describes them as wicked men. They were the priests. So when people will come to offer sacrifice to God, rather than the priests taking their authorized share of the offering. And I was looking at that scripture. I said, you know, every offering, I should be taking my own authorized share. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were coming, as people come to offer offering in the house of God, there is a, a, a portion that belongs to them, to the priest. That's what God commanded. Hallelujah. But when people will come, this priest, they will take what belongs to them. They will also take what belongs to God. The family of Eli. Eli was there, remember. He was a judge. He was also a priest. He was a very, very influential man. Which you can say he was a very successful man in our world today. You know, when they bring offering to the house of God, they are supposed to burn the fat so that the smoke and the aroma, all of them can go to heaven. But when they will bring those offering, the priests, the children of Eli will tell them, no, we want the fat also. And they will take the fat. In actual fact, they will go. If people refuse, they will say, we will take it by force. And that was what they were doing. This conduct of this man brought the worship of the Lord into disrespect. They were doing whatever they want, even the, with the women that serves at the, in the temple, they were doing whatever they want with the women. Eli knew what was going on. And I was wondering, as I was reading the scripture, and I, was, I tried to research a little bit to find out where is the mom 
in this situation. Where was she? I don't know why they didn't mention anything about her. Maybe she already passed away. I don't know. Because these sons were grown-up children. But Eli knew what was going on. And he called them. He did admonish them, really. He talked to them like, guys, you got to, you know, not do this, da 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 in a, in a, you know, in a gentle way. Whereas, he should have stopped them from serving as a priest at the temple. That's what he should have probably done. But he didn't do that. And we know what ended the story of Eli, you know. You see, what ended the story of Eli, number one, the children were killed. You remember that in the war, in the battle, they were killed in the battle. Eli himself, when they brought the report to Eli, Eli was at home, and when they told him, now watch this, watch this. When they told him that the children of, uh, his children were killed, he said, okay. He didn't say, okay, but, he, you know, he didn't do anything. But when they told him that the ark of God was taken away at that point, he fell backward, broke his neck, and died. He was a man who loved God. Church. Are you with me? He was a man who did what? He was a man who loved God, but died something in that family. That is to say that it is possible to love God, be a priest in the house of God, be a minister in the house of God. If you don't pay attention to the family, there could be disruptions in the family. He was an influential man. It doesn't matter how much you have, how much you owe. If you don't pay attention to your family, there could be destruction, there could be chaos, and there could be havoc. My prayer is that that will not be our own story in the mighty name of Jesus. A gentleman by the name David O. Marquez says, No other success can compensate for failure in the home. Are you with me, church? No other success can compensate for failure in the home. And those of you who don't really have a family, a, a, a nuclear family per se, you know, we are planning to get married, you are planning to, you know, find your uh, husband or find your wife, I want to encourage you. Marriage, family is more just than I am in love, you are in love. It's more than that, hallelujah. There are tasks, there are responsibilities that will make you successful in that home or in that family. Hallelujah. So, no other success can compensate for failure in the home. Therefore, we must all learn by the Spirit of God how to strike proper balance between the family and other responsibilities. Hello, church. We must learn to do what? To strike a what? I can't hear you, church. We must learn to strike a proper balance. There must be a balance between your job and your family. There must be a balance between your business and your family. There must be a balance between your family and other responsibilities that might be given to you. We read in the scripture of that man of God who died and he was in debt. And his sons were what? They were taken so that he can pay those debts. So we as the children of God, we as people of God, we need to know how to strike. But I know some of us want to work. We need to put food on the table. Yes, that's one of the tasks that we need to accomplish in order for our family to function effectively. But we must be able to balance that food um, that you're trying to get with the family. Hallelujah. Amen. That was a, a, a research done. It's called the McMaster model of family functioning. We all define, you remember we said that in order for you to have an elder family, they must accomplish family functions. That's something that is called family, can you say, we family functions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's not just that I'm just going to get married and have children. Hallelujah. And you know, everything will just go. No, there are family functions. The family function that needs that must happen in, in each family, when those family functions happen, they are accomplished, it leads to the successful development of each member. Not just development, but maintenance. The well-being. 
of everybody in the family. Hallelujah. Now, when we are looking at those functions, there has been research done. You know, actually, the, the first one was started in 1950s, in the 1950s, and it was done by Magill University in Canada, Montreal, Canada. And then they later shifted to Ontario, and then they continued the research even into the 1980s. And then there is a empirical data. Empirical data means there is data to prove it that in order for a family to be healthy, there are some functions that must be accomplished and those functions have impact on the emotional and the physical well-being of every family. Those functions, they have impact on the emotional and the physical. You know, I was thinking about this the other day when I was preparing. I was like, well, we, when we grew up, we didn't really, I mean, all this, you know, my children will come every day. They will give me a hug. They will give me a hug. When we are growing up, you see your daddy coming like this. You are running the other opposite direction. <laughs> but things have changed. We human beings have changed. We live in a, I, I was thinking about, I said, is it, is it this society? But if you go back to even where we grew up, it's not the same story anymore. Hallelujah. Knowledge is coming, is coming into the world. So we must flow with knowledge, we must flow with wisdom, we must flow with understanding, hallelujah. And I'd show to you that even though you may be sleeping in church, if you don't apply those basic principles, that's going to be a problem. That's going to be a problem in our homes and families. But I pray that will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. We must look at those functions and, uh, you know, we're defining that three major tasks. And that's what Richard says every family should have. Three major tasks. Number one is the basic task. There are basic tasks that every family must accomplish. Every family, say every family. Our family must accomplish this task. If those tasks are not accomplished, there's going to be crack in the family. There's going to be trouble. Likelihood there may be trouble. Even two believers born again. Amen. There are basic tasks, number one. Number two, there are developmental tasks. Somebody say developmental task. I can't hear you, church. There are developmental tasks. There are some tasks that need to happen at a certain age and stage of human development. If you have a 10-year-old boy, 12-year-old, 11-year-old, 6-year-old, 8-year-old, you can still control them, direct them. You know, it's still a little bit possible. But watch out when they turn 18, 19, 20. It's too late. Are you with me, church? It is what? There are certain things we need to, to nip in the, uh, at the board at certain stage. If you fail that stage, you may be able to do it by the grace of God, but it becomes a doubting task. It becomes much more harder. And that's why we must not go to sleep. The Bible says why the enemy fell asleep. Uh, the uh, wild man fell asleep. The enemy came and saw what? And saw tears among the, 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 the weak. You will not fall asleep in your family. In the name of Jesus. So you will not fall asleep in your family. Look here. There is no family that is perfect. Every family has their own challenges. They have their own uh, uh, daunting tasks they need to accomplish. Every family does. And so when we are defining family, and I like this definition, it says elder tasks. A family must be able to accomplish those tasks. Number two, a family must be able to meet the challenges. Hello, church. Is there any family without any challenges? Every family has their own challenges. And it also says that we must be able to adapt. That's called what we call adaptation. And what is called being able to bend. Sometimes you bend this way. It's right. You know you've been bending. Yeah, I know you've been bending. There's nothing like 100%. Um, um, how do they say it? Uh, you live on and rose and lily and, and flower forevermore. How do they say it? Happy, huh? happily ever after. Amen. 
Amen, in the name of Jesus. Unless you are not in this world. The Bible says in this world, you will have what? You have challenges, you have trials, you have tribulations, but be of good cheer because I've already what? I've already overcome. That's victory for us. You will have those. Every family will have those. But part of the key that we are speaking, that we're talking about is victory. You can't talk about victory without any battle. She said, yeah, 2021 is here, quota victory. What battle have you fought? You say, you say yeah, 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 yeah. It's like somebody who just uh, uh, was just waking up from bed and saying, oh, Lord, I thank you for this day. Wow, what a great day. Thank you. I've not really been upset today. I've not really had to talk back to anybody today. Thank you, Jesus. You, you've, not got out, you've not gotten out there. So pastor is good. Pastoring is good. I like it. Pastoring is good because sometimes we don't interact with people. But you get a job outside. And have to report to job on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you start meeting different people. You know, it's easy for me if I just come here and I talk to you and I live and I decree the word of God. It's much easier and I won't think there's any challenges out there in life. I won't think there are people that's going to pull your, your strings, you know, pull, you know, try to, you know, stir up stuff inside of you. And you say, oh, that is life. No, but when you go out there, when you're in this world, when you are encountering one thing or the other, when you have children, when you have to walk, there are challenges. So every family has that, but every family must be able to accomplish. The reason why it says two are better than one, because greater will be their word than their reward. When one is down, the other one can say what? And when you have a family, you are two, you are three, you are four, you are five, sometimes six, sometimes ten. The more... The merrier, they say. If you fall, you have nine people to do what? Oh, family is beautiful. Come on, just celebrate family in the house. Come on. Now, let's talk about a few tasks. Number one, the basic task. And you know that this task, the government is not supposed to do it for you. You know that some, some, sometimes the government can help out but it's not for a long time. Amen. Basic task area. When we talk about basic task areas, that's the, that the, it talks about physiological needs. This is related to Maslow hierarchy of needs. Every family needs to meet the basic task, right? Then we? Don't we? Yeah? We need to have food. Uh, don't we? We need to have water. We need to have warmth. We need to have shelter. We need to be able to come home from work and be able to work to rest, right? Those are part of the basic needs that every family. Tell me which family does not need to meet that task. If the government is helping you for a minute, it's going to be for a minute. Hallelujah. If anybody is helping you for a minute, but the prayer is that you, your family, you know, will be able to meet those tasks. Every family does need to meet basic tasks. If families are not meeting basic tasks, tell me what will happen in that family. It's not going to be easy. Emotional what? Ailment. Emotional, they will not be okay. If the father cannot provide food on the table, it's not easy. I shared my story before when my contract finished unexpectedly. I couldn't even tell my wife at home. I can't tell my children. I was like, what, what would I tell them? How would I, that there's no food at home or what? Or that they cut the light off? I was a pastor, yes, I was a pastor, but it was an emotional torture. I said, wow, why did they, they didn't even give me enough time. And I, all the money I've been making all this time, I've been spending everything. <laughs> There's no saving anywhere. Ah, Jesus. It's not easy. I've been there before. I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. Say so emotional, yes, I was not emotionally well. You may see me smiling, you may see me come and still preach. I had a song that time, I can't remember that song, I tried to remember the song. Oh my God, Jesus, oh, I can't remember the song. Eh? It's not take over, I can't even, I wrote take over, I didn't even remember take over at all. <laughs> oh, the Lord will meet all your needs. Your family will meet the basic needs. In the name of Jesus.
not easy. A family cannot function effectively if there is emotional turmoil, is, you know, daddy is emotionally torturing. But the family must be able to do that to stay, remain healthy. Hallelujah. There are safety needs, security, safety. Your children want safety. If you don't know that, those children, they want safety. They want to feel safe and secured. Even if they go outside and there are challenges outside, right? And people, you know, try to mess with them outside. They want to come home and to know that they are loved and that security in the home, in the family. It's an important task that the family must provide. Government will not provide that for you. Government will not do what? Eh, I can't hear you, church. They will not provide emotional safety, security, belongingness, love. Government will not provide that for you. It's the family function. Hallelujah. It's the basic function of the family. So don't leave your children to the teacher in school to provide emotional need and love and security. Some of you are waiting for them to feed them food at school. They need to feel important. They need that they esteem need. They need to feel prestige, feel feeling of accomplishment. They may be young, truly, but they need to know as young as three, two years old, they make blocks in the classroom. They make blocks. Ah, wow. Don't you think they, they recognize that? Don't you think that would have impact in their life? Versus being bullied all the way. Do you think that will being bullied will not have impact in their life when they grow up? It will also. So children need this basic function and the family is supposed to provide them, not the government, not the school system, not the court system. Not just about the court system, have no mercy. They mess up one minute, you know where they put them? In incarceration. Family, important function. Basic task. We can look at that. Then the other task called developmental task. Developmental task is the ability for the family to encourage physical, emotional, and social growth as individual and as a family unit. As they are growing from toddler to uh, uh, school age, to preschool, to school age, to adolescents, to young men and young women, they are developmental task, stages of growth that challenges infancy, there are things that challenge infancy, there are things that challenge adolescents, there are things that challenge Middle age and even old age, there are certain things that need to happen. We need the family. Unfortunately, they don't teach that in school. They don't teach you there in, in, in all the, you know, any college that you go to. They don't teach you all that. And we don't teach that much in church. You know where they teach this thing? You know where? Eh? Therapy, right? When something already broken. Ah, it will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Why don't you teach us the right thing so we know what to do, so we don't get to when we need, you know, these things are not working anymore, and then that's when they, you know. So, so you know, all these things exist all this time. You didn't tell us to do it. And now when there are chaos and there's trouble, that's where you are now saying we should. Sometimes when it's even late. But we need to understand this, and we need to prepare that God has given us all these things God who created man being created us with all these, these things inside of us. And we need to make sure we, we ensure that. You know, when we're talking about developmental areas, those of you who are familiar with psychosocial development, you know, uh, Eric, Erickson, right? Eric Erickson, stages of psychosocial development. You know, that stage of trust and mistrust. We are a child, you know, at that level, you... Whatever you do can make them to develop trust or you can make them develop mistrust all their life. Or you can, there are certain things you do at a certain age that you can make a child to have autonomy versus shame and doubt. That where they will be doubting themselves, they will be shameful about themselves. There are those stages of development. There are stages of industry versus inferiority. You make them feel that they are industrious. They can accomplish things. They can do things. And that's, you know, versus when they feel inferior, that these are stages of psychosocial development. The family is supposed to do that. Intimacy, identity versus world confusion. You know who they are. 
and all of that, you know that. And you see that from infant, toddler, preschool, grand school, teenager, young adult, middle age, and older adult. This task must be accomplished by family members. Don't wait till the therapist will do that for you. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Read up there online. Equip yourself. It is true that a lot of us develop by the grace of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> because we don't have any of this knowledge. It was just his grace and his mercy that kept us. But now you have the knowledge, you have the understanding. Don't, 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 don't try to play, you know, uh, game of chances. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us. Family is a family task. We must pay attention, be conscious to our children our spouse as they are developed. Now, there are some hazardous tasks that also must be able to be accomplished by family. I will do that and I will see. My time is gone. Say hazardous tasks, yes. You need, you need to accomplish hazardous Yes. A family must be able. There are crises in the family sometimes that happen. Illness could happen. Accident happen. Loss of income happen. Job change happens. Anything can Threaten the integrity of the family unit. Now, if you let that get to you and let that break you down, then the family structure is broken down. So that's why you must be able to accomplish those tasks, even when they come. Maybe there's a time when the husband changes job, or maybe there's a loss of job. Well, yes, in the family. You know, it's the family, right? Maybe the wife can take up something, or maybe she has something that we can use to keep the family what? Keep the family going. Maybe someone is sick in the family. <laughs> you know, sometimes the people that are sick, oh, nobody will be sick in Jesus' name. But what I'm saying is that there is a burden on the caregiver more than the one that is sick some of the time. Are you with me? There is more burden on the caregiver. It's a lot of work. Sometimes for the caregiver than the person who is sick, no one will be sick in Jesus' name, and no one will be this sick on there. But when it happens in a family, we must know how to accomplish those tasks that need to be done when in those periods. Anything that threatens the family integrity. Families that are unable to deal effectively with hazardous tasks will most likely exhibit maladapted family functioning. They won't be able to do it. They won't be able to cope. Because they can't adapt. Some homes, the only time you start hearing problem is when maybe the husband lose job. That is when you will start that fight will begin. Everything that he knows to do, he doesn't know to do them anymore. He will do one thing that is not related, but because you are hungry and you are bitter about the fact that he doesn't have a job, that's not been able to cope. Or function effectively during as adult task. Sometimes it may be the wife that lost the job. And then that's when the husband who started getting, am I the only one waking up every day, morning and night, going to work? And she just sitting at home, she's not even doing anything. Now I'm coming back, she's supposed to. You know, with all these tasks, that is what they call uh, instrumental, instrumental role and affective role. Instrumental role and affective role. Now, there are roles that we play with all of these tasks. Sometimes some people can be given more roles than they can carry in the family. It's better to go to work. It's better to come back and cook. It's better to take care of the children. It's better to clean the house. How about just one person now? You know, the role is not really distributed effectively. Even children, they have a role to play in all of these tasks. Even cleaning the house is an effective role in a family. Hallelujah. My wife cannot stand anything dirty. That's the only problem that I have. <laughs> she, will be, she will turn to another woman entirely. <laughs> but the children can help our family. So, we all have roles to play in family. 
every one of us. It doesn't matter because you are young. You have a role to play in that family. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We'll accomplish those tasks in the mighty name of Let's rise and pray for our family, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Is someone blessed this morning? Did someone get anybody to take home this morning? Hallelujah. You want to pray this morning? God, my Father, you are our ultimate source of strength. Can you say with me? My Father, you are our ultimate source of strength. When we are weak, you are strong. You lift us up when we are down. You renew our strength and we soar on wings like ego. Thank you for our family. Thank you for raising us up with your mighty hands. We pray this morning, Lord, strengthen the bonds within our family. Strengthen the bonds within our family. Be the center of our family relationship. In the name of Jesus, enable our families to be as a triple-braided cord that cannot be easily broken. Enable our family to be as a triple-braided cord that cannot be easily broken. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit, let it fill our heart so that we can love each another as Christ loves us. Deliver us in times of trials and troubles. In the name of Jesus, when life hand us many different challenges, let us know that we cannot face it on our own, but with you on our side. We believe that nothing is impossible. We believe that you will grant us the endurance to overcome any obstacle that may come our way. In the mighty name of Jesus, strengthen our family. Strengthen our family. Grant us grace in our family. Strengthen the cord of love in our family. The bond of love in our family. Let your spirit fill our heart. Deliver us in times of trouble. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, when we are facing challenges uh, that we cannot face on our own. Uh, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Grant us the endurance uh, to overcome uh, any obstacle that may come our way. In the mighty name of Jesus, bless our family, keep our family, keep our homes. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Come on, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray.